Today we'll be looking at the new browser from Mozilla called Firefox Quantum. Firefox Quantum is a refreshed version of the Firefox browser. Now Mozilla has been trying for years to try to compete with Google Chrome and after trying this browser for a while and I believe they may have done it this time. So in this video I want to show you a couple of features that I really like from Firefox Quantum. So let's get started. It's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. As you can see I'm using a Linux computer here and installation was a breeze and in a couple of seconds you get it up and running. It will prompt you to replace your browser with this new one and I have the new one running. As you can see the UI is very clean and slick. It reminds me so much of Google Chrome down to the menu here. It's actually very similar. And as far as the browser goes, it hasn't crashed for me yet and it runs really fast for me. And it supports all the latest rendering HTML5 goodness in the browser. So I'm just going to go over some of my favorite features from this browser. The first feature I want to go over is the screenshot feature. So you can now take screenshots of the web page very easily right, right within the browser without any added extra add-on or extensions. So all you have to do is click on these three dots here and then you say I want to take screenshots. So the screenshot is still in beta but um, after a small tour you can basically it actually selects the element for you for those of you who are developers you understand what this means. Um, otherwise you can um, drag just the areas that you want and you can save it and then it will actually live in uh, on Firefox and then you can download it to your browser. So this is very convenient for those of you who take screenshots a lot and uh, it's not you, you can only also save a full page or you can save only the visible screen. So if I go to save full page right now it saves a complete web page in like you don't have to scroll or take multiple pictures and edit them together. So I find this feature extremely handy and I definitely can see myself using this instead of the built-in screenshot tool. The next feature I want to show you is, it's not really a feature but it's more about the customization. So you can actually add a couple of um, buttons here to the, to the toolbar if you want to, to if you want to like um, reach a uh, new private window easily you can just grab it up here and pick preferences whatever you want it you can just drag and drop um, that's not new but um, I noticed that on this box here the search box so in Chrome it's called the Omni bar Omni, Omni box but in Firefox it's pretty much the same thing you can search for things right over here so you can do it to go and it will search with Google by default but you can select other providers if you want to search for uh, other places quicker and or you can set it as your default provider for the search let's say I wanna I wanna I'm looking for a mug on Amazon so you just click on that and it takes you to the Amazon page and if you are like don't like to track get tracked by Google you can um, search with DuckDuckGo down here so it's extremely handy and I really like this feature now you can you don't have to go to this website first and then click on um, the search bar on that side. You can just search directly from here. So I really like this feature. Uh, as far as like, extensions and themes go, it's pretty standard. So if you go to customize, sorry, if you go to add-ons, so here you can get um, extensions, themes, and plugins. So extensions are pretty much the standard um, extensions. So um, let's see. So you can search for that and then you can find a massive amount of extensions for Firefox in here in the library. So pretty much anything you want you could find in Chrome, you could probably find it here. So let's say I want, you know, uBlock Origin for app blocking and it's there and I want the Honey extension is also there and you can see ratings. So it's pretty um, powerful and uh, there's a big library selection for it. And as far as theme goes, I'm not a fan of this but um, you can basically skin the theme of your browser. Let's say I, I want this one, I'm just gonna click on install and as you can see the top here it changes to the background. I was never a fan of this so I'm just gonna turn it off. So the next feature I want to show you is for developers. As you might know that um, if you're a developer 
you'll probably want to use the the browser mostly for their you know dev tools so you can inspect things and make coding you know debugging easier on the browser so firefox thought of that and they remade their debugging tool to a set of pow pretty powerful features so if i go to inspector here so this right here will remind you of uh, firebug or what they had before and it actually i really like this one um compared to chrome where this one actually highlights the actual uh, divs and uh, and the content and their boundaries so i find that really useful and uh, here is really standard it's very if you're familiar with chrome you probably should know about how this works uh, the thing that bothers me is that i don't know how i can move these things around i like to have council as my last element here but uh, i don't know how to move it but if, somebody, if, if any of you know how to do that let me know and this top bar here offers a pretty standard set of features for you to use on your uh, on your all your debugging needs and it pretty much is uh, very useful so and to, to uh, let me go over a couple of things here um, this one it sets the boundary of your context let's say you have an iframe on the web page it will you know set the context in the iframe if you want this button here it's a uh, you can split the council right where you are so if you're an inspector and you want to council down here you can just turn it on here this is the emulation screen um, for mobile responsive design and uh, you can take screenshots of this viewport or you can emulate the touch simulation uh, and just change different sizes to the device or you can change uh, pre-existing pre devices for their viewport size um, so this is a pretty good emulator and there are a couple of customizations you can see here um, you can actually set the theme of this editor so if I want like a dark, dark theme here I like it a lot and um, the last button here is docking the tool to different locations you could even pop it out if you want so this is very similar to Chrome so if you're a developer coming from Chrome you should feel right at home on uh, with this debugging tool so the next and the most important feature for this release besides the increasing speed and performance is the private browsing so now you can start a private browsing window um, one extra, uh, one thing about this private browsing is that if you go to preferences here and you go to privacy and security you can actually um, have ad block built in so it will disable all the tracking stuff on uh, on the on, on your computer any third-party tracking they will block so if you click on always it will block on everywhere even your incognito will not sorry private window will not or, you know it will always block well here the default setting is it only blocks on in private windows so if I go to a private window and I go to a website let's see let's say um, let me search for Vox Media. One of those media companies. They probably have a lot of ads about it on the website. So if you go to Vox.com, actually, let me go to uh, another website. Fortune Magazine. They probably have a lot of ads in there. So as you can see, I'm in private browsing mode, and you'll see that it's actually, well, it's surprised that they're. Uh, web page is not secure and the tracking prote protection is enabled that means I won't see any ads on this page and it's all trackings are like taken away so if I do this compared to a regular window I probably see more ads here than uh, here so they probably have an ad oh weird I don't see much ads Oh, sorry. If I go to an article page, I'll see an ad. So if I go here, you see, like, this is an ad, Outbrain's an ad, this is an ad. So the ads are loading here on the regular browser, but in the private browsing, I don't see any ads. So this is a very nice thing about um, the new browser, is that it blocks the ads. But it's bad for publishers, obviously. But um, I find this this really taking uh, private browsing to another level. 
So with that said, this is the conclusion to this initial review of Firefox. I really like this one and I hope you guys use it and then see if Firefox can climb back to its former glory. I'll see you guys in the next video.